Quantifying electric flux around point charges. So let's start off with a point charge. Let's give it a positive charge, which means the field lines are directed straight outward from that. Now let's say we would like to calculate the electric flux at some observation point away from the point charge. We'll derive this in a bit, but here's the equation that we're going to use to calculate the electric flux. And it has four terms in it. We'll go through this one term at a time. The first is this Q. That's the amount of charge. It's the point charge that we're talking about that creates the electric flux. This has units of coulombs. And if we had a negative charge, then it would be a negative number with coulomb units. The next variable in this equation is R. R is the distance from the charge to the observation point. So no matter where that observation point is, the distance from the charge to the observation point is R. Now notice in this equation, we have an R squared, but R itself is distance to the observation point. We also have this unit vector, A sub R, and this hat over top of the A lets us know that that is a unit vector. If we draw a line from the, the charge to our observation point, the unit vector is in that direction from the charge to the observation point. So we just draw the unit vector over here to the side somewhere, and we know then that the field will be in that direction. And so then that lets us calculate the overall electric flux density D, and that has units of coulombs per meter squared. Notice coulombs is in the units for the electric flux, the electric flux is most closely associated with charge. So really that should be the first thing that you calculate around a charge is the electric flux. Remember I said everything in electrostatics has to come from Maxwell's equations. And we just presented this equation seemingly from nowhere. Here I want to show that that equation for the electric flux around a point charge really does come from Maxwell's equations. So we start with Gauss's law. Remember what this is. We're integrating the electric flux around some closed surface that encompasses a charge, and that gives us the total charge Q. In this case, let that charge be at the origin that simplifies the math. It makes most sense then. We know that D will have only a radial component, so we're integrating over a sphere. So this will be a double integral over theta and phi. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll integrate phi from 0 to 2 pi. We'll integrate theta from 0 to pi. We put in our expression for d, and all we really know is that it has only a radial component and in the radial direction. And then, of course, we have our differential vector surface here. Now let's work through the math. We have some constants we can bring out to the left. We can also calculate the dot product, both this differential surface and our expression for D only had an R component. So uh, the, the unit vector AR drops and we bring the DR R squared to the outside. Now we're left with our integration. So let's go ahead and integrate with respect to phi because there are no phi terms. So we just have this integral from phi equals zero to two pi of just D phi. So we know that this will just end up evaluating to two pi. We can bring that two pi to the outside and now we're left integrating sine from zero to pi. Well, the antiderivative of sine is negative cosine. So we'll bring that negative to the outside and then we evaluate our cosine, cosine of pi minus cosine of zero. Cosine of pi is negative one. So we have negative one minus and then cosine of zero is positive one. So a negative one minus one, that gives us a negative two. We cancel the negatives with this negative out here, and then the two combines with the two out here, and we end up with a four pi dr r squared. So our equation from above now is total charge Q equals four pi dr r squared. Well, we can solve this expression for dr. 
Now, looking at this, dr really only has the radial direction, and we've calculated that, so we can real easily make that a vector equation. And there is our expression that we had for calculating the electric flux around the point char charge described by charge Q. Let's look at this equation a little bit. Notice in the denominator, there's an R squared. And so that means the magnitude of the electric flux decays as one over R squared. And we might wonder why R squared? Why not R cubed? Why not R? And if we think about moving away from the origin, the surface area of that sphere, as that energy distributes itself, as we move away, that energy becomes less and less dense, the surface area increases with R squared. So that's why the magnitude goes down by R squared. So we sort of showed that by hand waving and we also derived it through integration. But just remember in three dimensions that that magnitude decays one over R squared. A reminder about the direction of the electric flux. If we have a positive charge, the electric flux will diverge from that and be pointed outward from a positive charge. If we have a negative charge, we essentially have the same direction, but it's in the opposite direction. So uh, it's inward converging to a negative charge. And just to keep reminding you, there's no such thing as lines. These fields are really this smooth, continuous thing, much more like a fog or cloud. Here is a more useful equation that we'll use when we want to calculate the electric flux. So I first gave you this equation, and I think this is the equation that we should have in our minds when we're thinking about the physics of a situation. However, when we want to calculate electric flux, I think this second form is much more useful, and you'll see that when we work examples. But this does have a problem with it. In the denominator, we have this vector r cubed. And if this is programmed too well into our brains, we might start thinking that the magnitude of the electric flux decays as one over r cubed. And that's not true. Remember, we have one magnitude up here. So this is sort of r minus r cubed to the first power to the third and the, and the bottom. So when we bring the magnitude to the denominator, we do end up with a squared. So just to remind you, this first expression is really what should be programmed into our minds so that we can picture the physics. And this has a clear one over R squared dependence. But this second one, I think, is much more useful for calculations. And it's because it isolates this vector. And if we know the position of the charge, and so that'll be R sub Q, and we know the position of our observation point R, this lets us calculate R minus R Q, or that might be a, a vector big R, and then we divide by the magnitude and we can get this unit vector AR. But we could just subtract this, get some vector R, and we'll have this vector R divided by vector R cubed. And you'll see when we work through examples, it, it actually makes things easier in my mind. If you don't like that, feel free to use this first equation in your calculations. Then the electric field intensity E. Remember, it's the electric flux density that is most closely associated with the electric charge. Therefore, that should be what is calculated first. If the question asks for the electric field intensity, by all means, calculate the electric flux density first, then we'll use the constitutive relation to calculate the electric field intensity. So it would be the electric flux divided by the permittivity that this whole system is embedded in. So if we take our expression for D that we've derived previously and substitute it in here, we can get an expression to calculate the electric field intensity directly. It looks the same, but here is this permittivity term. And here's the danger of that form and why I don't like it. When this is presented in textbooks, at least the vast majority of the textbooks that I read, this is actually the equation given for calculating the electric field around a point charge. And one is the electric flux most closely associated with, with charge, not the electric field intensity. And then notice there's this term epsilon naught. 
And that's very confusing to me because I'll be looking at that equation and wondering, is there an assumption built into that? Uh, is that really only for vacuum? Where is the relative permittivity term or the dielectric constant? Is this general for all things or is that term just missing? I don't know. It's confusing. And it turns out there is a hidden assumption built into this that this is only valid for vacuum. Well, what if it's not vacuum? Well, okay, we just stick in the epsilon sub r, but it's not clear by looking at the equation necessarily that that's what you would do. So I don't like that expression. I like first calculating the electric flux, and then if the electric field intensity is needed, calculate that from the electric flux, and then you'll never be confused. Let's do a quick example to pull all of this together. And this will be in full three dimensions for fun. Let's say we have a charge Q sitting at position R sub Q. So for this problem, our charge Q is two microcoulombs and it's sitting at one AX plus two AY. Then in air, we have an observation point way out here. And this is at position six AX plus four AY. We would like to calculate the electric field intensity out here at observation point R. So here's the solution. And we'll do this in two steps. First, we calculate the electric flux. Then we calculate the electric field intensity. So here's the equation that I like to use for calculating the electric flux density. And it has the R minus RQ terms here, which I think is a little bit easier. So the second thing I'll do then is calculate the R minus RQ. So I put in our expression for R minus the expression for RQ and I get a vector out here. And sometimes I'll write this as capital vector R. We then need the R minus RQ divided by the magnitude of R minus RQ cubed. So we have the expression that we just calculated for R minus RQ. And then on the bottom, we have the magnitude of that vector cubed. And after we do the math, this is what we end up with. And notice the units, one over meters squared. Okay, now we can throw all this information back into our original equation. We have our charge Q divided by four pi, and then this expression here is the R minus RQ divided by magnitude of R minus R, RQ cubed. So that's what we calculated, and we end up with an expression for the electric flux density. Now it would be an easy mistake to say, hey, I got the electric field, I'm done, but we have to remember the problem asked for the electric field intensity. So not the electric flux density. Don't get those confused. So we use the constitutive relation and the electric field intensity is the electric flux density, which we've just calculated divided by the permittivity. And in this case, I'm writing the permittivity as the product of the free space permittivity times the relative permittivity, also called the dielectric constant. So in the numerator is the electric flux density we just calculated. Here's our free space permittivity. And since this is an error, the relative permittivity is just 1.0. Well, we throw this into our calculator and out comes an expression for our electric field intensity. We'll put a box around that and we're done. So now we can plot it and we see that we have an electric field, a rather large electric field. It's almost kilovolts per meter. And it's pointed off in this direction, which is directly away from the charge Q. And that makes sense. We know that the electric field only has that radial component. 